Basic Boat Tools, Part 1. What's in my go-to box? Or what's in Sid's drawers? We take a quick look at some of the cheaper tools that you'll need in your go-to box or emergency box. This isn't all the tools you'll need on a boat. Well, by popular request, um, we've been asked a couple of times um, by Patreons and by some of our subscribers just to go through some of the go-to tools that we have uh, in Cindy's drawers. We have a drawer down here, if you can see it in shot. Um, it's quite deep, it goes back probably three quarters of the way of this table, the depth of this table. And we use that drawer for most of the things you see here um, with a few exceptions and I'll, I'll go through those exceptions in a minute. This is not a definitive list and this is not all the tools that we carry uh, on the boat. So this is the stuff that we generally use on a daily or weekly basis and generally it covers most of the things for uh, light maintenance, um, additions, modifications, things that go wrong, fault diagnosis, that kind of thing. Um, these tools, again, generally are cheaper versions. These are not expensive tools. And the reason for that is you will drop stuff over the side. You can buy, for example, screwdrivers which have a, a hole in the end you can put a lanyard on. I've already lost one of two sets of, of screwdrivers. Um, I've lost one. Uh, if anybody's in uh, Molo 13 in Mallorca Marina, um, there's one of my screwdrivers on the bottom. I couldn't pick it up with my big magnet. The other thing is that you're in a marine environment and none of these tools are stainless steel and even if they were they are likely to corrode um, a good example is this set of grips here and this set of allen keys here um, both of which are chrome steel and have already uh, started to rust quite badly despite me uh, cleaning them up with some uh, emery cloth and adding um, some WD-40 the other thing is that when you clean the tools and use WD-40 whenever you use that tool you're going to transfer that product onto whatever you're touching so if you're working with shackles on a, on a sail for example and you've got WD-40 over your screwdriver or pliers or grips or whatever you're going to transfer that to the sail so you don't want to do that and also you'll transfer it to the gel coat and uh, for those of you that sunbathe on boats you'll know that uh, while suntan oil is a great thing it's an absolute bitch to get off of gel coat and it stains it um, and you quite often end up going around with a, a towel and polish to take it off so there's a couple of caveats um, we have a lot more tools we can go through those at a later date but as I said this is the basic stuff that we use kind of every day. So I'll start at this end um, with these spanners. So our boat's a European boat. We use generally metric fixings and fastenings and therefore it makes sense for our go-to box to have uh, metric spanners. So a full set of metric spanners um, from 19 mil uh, down to six millimeters these ones have got soft handles no reason for that just that was what was cheap and cheerful um, I can't remember how much they were I guess they were 
eight US dollars, something like that, which is about 12 euros. Now you notice here, and I'll see if I can get some zoomed in pictures to add into the corner somewhere. We have one and a half sets out. So why would I have one and a half sets? Why not two full sets? Well, let's, let's come to that in a second. A couple of tips. If you're using metric fasteners and you're using, for example, a 12 millimeter thread, the head of that bolt and the nut will be a 19 millimeter spanner. So after a little while, you'll be able to look at a bolt and say, oh yeah, that's 12 mil or 10 mil or eight mil or six mil or so on. And you'll know exactly what spanner to pick up. So 19 millimeter fits a 12 mil thread 17 millimeter fits a 10 mil thread and here's where it jumps a little bit um, 13 millimeter fits an 8 mil thread 10 mil fits a 6 mil thread and so on and so forth I'll see if I can find a little chart to um, put in the corner somewhere so moving on to why we have one and a half sets if you have two nuts which need to lock together or you have a bolt that needs to be held in position while you do up the nut and another tip always remember to hold the bolt still and turn the nut never turn the bolt you will need two 13 millimeter spanners to lock that bolt off the same with the 17 and the same with the 19 so if we need something that needs doing from our emergency box and it's 8mm thread, you need two 13mm spanners. And the same with 6mm uh, threads, you'd need two 10mm spanners. So that's why there's one and a half sets. The other thing is, there's a couple of bolts on our engine, God only knows why, where Volvo, in their wisdom, have used an 11mm head on an M6 thread, or have used um, a 7mm um, on a 5mm. I don't know why that is, maybe just that it was a crossover from Imperial. We do have Imperial spanners in the other box, but you will need, for example, your 11m spanner for the CAV um, filter on your engine to remove the filter and the filter bowl and the, and the um, clear bowl that you've got at the bottom for inspecting your diesel. So that's why there's an 11mm there. Um, I think that just about covers spanners or wrenches as you call them in the States. We do have a large adjustable, very seldom used, but something that's handy. Um, for example, bottle screws. Uh, yeah, and before you all shout at me and say, yeah, you shouldn't use adjustable spanners on bottle screws, they can be quite handy, especially for things which are non-critical, like your guard wires and that kind of thing. So that's in there just as a, as a go-to. Uh, this particular one's quite good quality, um, and it does have millimetres marked off on the front of it so that you can tell roughly how far you're opening it up, which is quite handy. So that's uh, wrenches or, or spanners. Moving on, screwdrivers. Um, again, I'll try and get some, some shots. A big, large, wooden handled screwdriver. Um, this is always referred to as Grandad screwdriver. Not because it was Grandad's, but because <laughs> my father, uh, my son's grandfather, um, bought it many, many years ago as part of a some stuff that he bought me good solid wooden handle hickory handle and it has a hex drive here that you can put um, a 13 millimeter spanner on to give you that bit more purchase this one is particularly good for when you're removing the drain plugs and filler plugs from uh, gearboxes or sail drives um, again you can see it's quite rusty in places um, but we do give it a clean up every now and then. A full set of insulated screwdrivers, I won't go through all of those. 
um, there is one screwdriver which I will show you in a moment which is uh, something that we have but we would recommend you don't use let's see if I can find that <clears throat> okay this is the dreaded uh, electrician screwdriver it has a small neon lamp inside it and a resistor and then a metal spring uh, which contacts the tip of the screwdriver um, I hate these things I absolutely hate them why well because the first thing is it's rated at 125 volts to 250 volts um, there's a big difference between 125 volts and 250 volts um, in the fact that one will probably kill you definitely and um, if you're unlucky and one probably won't the idea of these is that you put them on something which you want to test to see if it's live and you then put your finger on the tip of the screwdriver and therein lies the problem you are actually connecting yourself and making a circuit which is never a good idea that circuit may be off but static electricity can set these neons off and make you think it's live so here's the other thing if any part of that connection in there the resistor the little spring or the neon light become detached corroded don't work for whatever reason and you test with one of these you could potentially be working on something which you think is dead and is actually live at 250 volts or thereabouts so these one good place for these and that's the bin it came as part of a set I just wanted to let you know I've mentioned these before I think in a previous uh, previous video so generally screwdrivers crossheads and flats all insulated not a particularly expensive set um, and as I explained you will lose screwdrivers over the side so don't get your best snap-on dealer to provide you with a beautiful set of screwdrivers um, because the only people that will benefit them in, uh, in the long term is the fish um, one thing that is sometimes a good idea and that's to have uh, your screwdriver either magnetize it with a magnet or um, demagnetize it and that's so that you can pick up uh, ferrous metal uh, fixings obviously if you're using 316L fixings which most of them on the, our boat are um, it's pointless having a magnetized screwdriver because 316L is uh, is not magnetic we also have a small set of these and this is a cheapy Chinese one this is a set of micro screwdrivers, watchmakers, screwdrivers, whatever you want to call them they're great for electronic stuff um, you can interchange the heads and this set has both flats, cross heads, torques and allen or socket um, ends and in the end of it you can put the ones that you're likely to use clip it on your lapel or on your shirt top and carry it around again a cheap set I think these were about four dollars something like that um, they will rust you will lose bits um, something will go clink clink splash at some point so don't invest in, in a really good set, set of, uh, of these type of micro screwdrivers or jeweler screwdrivers because you're going to lose them you can have a second set which you know you keep uh, locked away for use in in the boat which we do have um, but it's really in your go-to box not worth having a good set so the next piece of thing um, I'm gonna ask you what that is I'll, I'll do a close-up of it you can see that so this is a specialist tool um, it's pennies literally pennies but without this you may struggle to do something so what is it 
What is this tool? I'll put a, an insert somewhere down here of a close up. Tell me in the description what you think this is and what it's for. There's a challenge. Okay, let's move on along the table. Um, I need a pointy stick, which I've put down somewhere. Okay, let's forget the pointy stick. This here are grips, snips, pliers, cutters, strippers. This is a set, uh, we call them water pump pliers, um, but they're adjustable grips. Um, they are good for things like hose tails um, and when you're working with plumbing, that kind of thing. They, the jaws don't move parallel on these. If you can see that, the jaws as they open and close um, are n only perpendicular to the back of the, the grip on the upper jaw on this one not on the lower jaw so when you use these you are likely to be only gripping on the top and just touching at some point on that jaw so if you're using these on um, big nuts and bolts or fittings just be aware that because these jaws are toothed and hardened steel they will scratch or mark whatever you're putting them onto and another good tip is to grab a piece of rag, put it inside that jaw and then close on it so that you don't damage whatever you're trying to uh, grab. Conventional side cutters, conventional electrician's pliers and I'm a traditionalist. I like to use uh, traditional wire strippers, always use them. I've had a couple of those new fangly ones with the spring in and haven't really got on with them, um, don't like them, they sometimes nick the inner core uh, when you're stripping off the insulation of, uh, of cables. So traditionalist, again, cheap um, and fairly easy to, uh, to use once you set them up. So here's something that will cause controversy. This is a set of crimping pliers. And all of you that are electricians or have some, some good electrical knowledge will be shouting at me now. I can hear you in the background. Why are you using those, Ant? Well, as I said before, you will lose things. They will go rusty, they'll go over the back of the boat, somebody will borrow them and then sail off into the sunset and forget to return them. And so, a cheap set of those uh, that if you lose it doesn't really matter um, it's always a good idea in your go-to box so <coughs> excuse me what should you have okay so I went under our front berth and got out our ratcheting crimping pliers and these are these are a professional set these are quite expensive I think these were about 30 bucks the reason they were quite expensive is they're a good quality make. They have three sets of jaws. So at the moment in there, uh, in here, are a set of terminal jaws for yellow, blue, and red terminals. But there's also another set of jaws for um, bigger uh, electrical terminals. These type of things. You see that, and. Uh, the, the normal ones, you, the size you use for solar cable, which are the small ones, and you need to have the right crimping tool for those. So that's the good set. They they stay uh, they stay under the front bunk with uh, our other tools. And just while you're there, we have a big box of probably I don't know a thousand different fittings, switches, crimps, terminals, fuses. Uh, yes, I have chalk blocks in there. I can hear you shouting again. Chalk blocks. Chalk blocks are great for temporary wiring things. Um, they are not marinized in any way. So when you make a terminal off into a chalk block, you can expect within six months to 18 months that the um, cable that you're using will corrode at the end if you're not using uh, a pre-tinned cable and there's lots and lots of boats out there that aren't wired with uh, pre-tinned or pre-coated cable 
it's just standard copper wire and the the marine environment will uh, will destroy it so chop blocks yes we've got them they're only a temporary measure to get us out of trouble as it were and uh, that's why they're in there okay so I think that's covered um, 